was in 2017 that we saw just how cost effective uh, wind energy was and how might we uh, develop uh, wind energy and that really became the genesis of, of uh, the development of the Birchill Wind Project in Laurenville. There's, there's been quite a transformation uh, in the Laurenville Colson Cove area. I recall when we had the initial announcement, uh, you know, that was made there. It was almost difficult to imagine exactly what it was going to look like as it does today. I'm Chief Ross Perley, Zalgum of Nagutguk, Tobik First Nation. Culturally, Indigenous people have a sacred duty to try and protect the environment for the next seven generations. The green energy sector is something that we're all proud of. 51% of the revenue comes back to the community. Virtual isn't our first wind farm and it probably won't be our last. I'm happy to set an example for other First Nations that want to get into this type of industry. I'm happy to set an example for government proponents, utilities and corporations that you can find ways to work together that are beneficial for all parties. We first started working with Tobik First Nation in 2015. Virtual seemed like a natural extension of that partnership. Natural Forces works in wind energy projects, solar energy projects, trying to tackle the climate change emergency that we're in and doing it in a format that benefits um, the community uh, as a whole. This turbine is the latest generation from Enercon. This is a vast change from the early 2000s. Instead of having a turbine that would be about 600 kilowatts, we're now looking at 4,200 kilowatts in each machine. And so you do the same amount of wind energy with one seventh of the number of turbines. I think Birchill is a perfect example of how the utility, a community-minded developer, and a First Nation can come together to create a great project. I hope that we can all be proud of we have, what we have built here today. This is history in the making for St. John. Today is a remarkable day for renewable energy development and climate change action in the province of New Brunswick. Our vision at St. John Energy is to be a national utility leader in the transition to net zero. And the Birchill Wind Project represents 15% uh, of our annualized energy requirement coming from a local renewable uh, green source of electricity for at least the next 25 years. It takes us a long way uh, toward achieving our aspirations around uh, net zero by 2030. Welcome everyone to St. John Energy's annual community meeting. My name is Shelley Wood and I'm the Executive Director of Finance, People and Community at St. John Energy. It is my pleasure to serve as your MC today. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which St. John Energy operates is the traditional unceded territory of the Wollastiqua and Mi'kmaq peoples. We pay tribute to elders past and present as we begin here today. As you joined us, you were treated to a video of the development of the Birchill Wind Farm, which is now feeding clean and renewable energy onto our grid. We are very proud of this project and the partnership we forged with Natural Forces and Topeak First Nation that brought it to life. We have brought together a number of interesting speakers for you today, but first, a few housekeeping items. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the event, and we encourage anyone with questions for St. John Energy to submit them through Q&A. You can do so at any time. If you are having any technical issues, please email jessica at jessica.delong at sjenergy.com, and we will assist you. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome to the virtual podium, Jim Shaw, Chairperson of the Board of Commissioners for St. John Energy. Jim? Thank you, Shelley. I am both honored and humbled to serve as Chair of the Board of Commissioners for St. John Energy. I believe in our mission, which is to provide affordable, reliable, and innovative solutions to our customers. 
helping them make informed choices so they can take control of their energy. This focus on the customer is very important. It's been a hallmark of our utility since it was created 100 years ago. And I believe that has been one of the reasons for our success. Our vision is also very important, and that is to be a national utility leader in the transition to net zero. The federal government has asked electrical utilities across the country to ensure they are net zero by 2035. St. John Energy would like to get there five years earlier, by 2030. And we're working on a roadmap that will show us how to reach that goal. It will also tell us how we can help customers achieve it too, if they wish. You will hear more about this important initiative later in the meeting. One of the reasons I'm very proud to serve with St. John Energy is its track record of being a forward-thinking, innovative company. And we're harnessing that today to transition our company and the city we serve to a clean energy future. That's not only exciting, but crucial, not just for us, but for our city and our environment, our province and our country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. And now I am pleased to share with you a video that Premier Blaine Higgs shared with us recently. Hello, everyone. Bonjour. It is my pleasure to have this opportunity to speak to the hardworking team at St. John Energy. Je suis heureux d'avoir l'occasion de m'adresser à l'équipe dévouée de St. John Energy. Over the last century, St. John Energy has played an important role in the evolution of our province. Since its earliest days, your organization has built a reputation for reliability, innovation, and prudent fiscal management, a reputation it continues to uphold. St. John Energy has been an important partner as we work towards a net zero future. St. John Energy est un partenaire important, alors que nous travaillons à bâtir à avenir carbone neutre. Your organization's 030 roadmap is an example of the vision needed to bring about a prosperous yet sustainable future. On behalf of all New Brunswickers, I thank you for your leadership. I look forward to working together to achieve our shared goals for New Brunswick. Je hâte que nous puissions travailler ensemble pour atteindre nos objectifs communs pour le New Brunswick. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much, Premier Higgs. Now I'd like to welcome Ryan Mitchell, President and CEO of St. John Energy. Ryan? All right. Well, thank you, Shelley, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I very much appreciate you taking the time uh, to join us uh, today for our annual community meeting. Uh, over the next uh, 15 minutes or so, I am going to touch on some of the highlights uh, from 2022. Well, there is no better way to start uh, this morning uh, than by talking about Birch Hill. Uh, we were at the dawn of a new era in St. John, a new era of clean and renewable energy with the Birch Hill Project now online. The video that opened our meeting today shared a glimpse of the journey to build this 42 megawatt wind farm and connect it to our grid. This project underscored the importance of partnerships, partnerships that we forged with natural forces and the Tobik First Nation to make it happen. I'm also grateful to our government partners for their support. Partnerships like this will be increasingly important with the energy transition. I'd also like to recognize the many local contractors involved in the construction. And of course, to the dedication of everyone at St. John Energy who helped bring this project to life. And then finally to our community who turned out in big numbers uh, for the official uh, opening earlier this month. Thank you for the tremendous support throughout the project. You may have seen the recent news uh, related to the launch of Zero Thirty, aided by nearly $4 million in funding uh, from Natural Resources Canada. The federal government has asked electricity companies in Canada to reach net zero in their operations by 2035 as a key step in the country reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. We are targeting five years earlier by 2030. Zero 030 will be St. John Energy's roadmap to achieving net zero and helping our customers get there too, if they wish. For two years now, we've been pursuing a vision of being a national utility leader in the transition to net zero, which is why we have now firmly set our sights on 2030. There are three main pillars to Zero 030. First is achieving an even cleaner energy supply. This will be accomplished with a particular focus on renewable energy and storage, 
and through collaboration with MB Power, First Nations, and other partners. Second is innovating with our customers. So what products and services could we provide them? And what role would they like to see St. John Energy play in the future that assists them in the energy transition? EV charging is one example. I am often asked about plans to expand our network in the city. And I want you to know that this is definitely a priority area for us. In fact, we are working very closely right now with a couple of partners. And uh, although while it is too early to give details, uh, I am certainly hopeful that we will be able to share some exciting news uh, very soon. Third is planning for a future with significantly greater demand for electricity. Where do we need to focus and invest to accommodate both growth as well as ensure high reliability? When I say a significantly greater demand for electricity, while well, utilities across Canada are preparing to double or even triple the amount of electricity when compared to what we deliver today. This is as homes and businesses increasingly turn to electricity to meet their clean energy needs. Many of you will have heard of our Shave the Peak campaigns, where we enlist our customers' help in temporarily scaling back their energy use during times of highest demand in the year, typically the coldest winter days. Shaving this peak demand is important to us. Times of peak demand are costly, attracting charges from a wholesale supplier of electricity that costs us up to $30 million a year. That's because in order to satisfy peak demand, the provincial utility often needs to bring fossil fuel generation plants online. That can lead to twice as much CO2 from electricity generation when compared to off-peak times. So there is both a financial and an environmental incentive to reduce the peak. In addition to the efforts of thousands of customers during these times, we also undertake a number of steps to reduce or shift the load on the grid, such as reducing voltage in a way that customers don't notice, but that delivers significant savings. And then we have our Tesla battery, which we can load up with power in off-peak hours and discharge it when it's needed. You may have caught the news recently that there will be three more Tesla mega packs with almost six megawatts of additional storage arriving in St. John later this year to be operational in 2024. They will be tremendous assets, not only in shaving the peak, but also available to balance the energy produced by the Birchill Wind Farm. You can see in the chart here that we have been steadily increasing the amount of money that we were able to save through shaving the peak. Last year, more than $1.1 million. And in doing so, we were also curbing carbon emissions in the province. An overriding focus at St. John Energy, including much of what I've talked about already this morning, revolves around keeping rates stable and affordable. We focus on operational efficiencies. We focus on innovation designed to improve what we offer the customer. We also focus on enhancing the reliability of the grid. We embrace Birchill not only for the environmental benefits, but because wind is the lowest cost form of a new electricity generation in Canada today. Today, our rates remain amongst the lowest in Atlantic Canada. Our residential rates are 10% lower than those in Fredericton or Moncton, and over 30% lower than Halifax or Charlottetown. Maintaining competitive rates for our customers has been and will continue to be a priority for St. John Energy. This slide illustrates our consolidated net income, providing you a high-level snapshot of our financial performance. Here you can see how we were doing in 2019 before the pandemic, then the effect the pandemic had in 2020, how we were focused on recovering from that in 2021, and then how we did last year. In 2019, we were slightly above $3 million. And then last year, more than $3.5 million. This performance is very much supported by the efficiencies in our operations, like our peak reduction efforts, and as well by our success in customer innovation. Over the last several years, we've been meeting customers' needs by focusing on providing convenient products and services that will help them improve their comfort and enhance energy efficiency. This includes our heat pump rentals, our water heater rentals, and our commercial area lighting program. This graph shows you how demand for these has grown steadily over the last several years. 
Customers appreciate the innovations and they like the hassle-free maintenance and services that come with them. Best of all, they are helping improve energy efficiency for our customers, which of course is also good for the environment. At St. John Energy, we collaborate with all three levels of government as we advance our work in building a cleaner energy future and building a more sustainable utility. At the federal level, we have successfully secured considerable support for projects like Smart Grid, Net Zero, and Energy Storage. It was heartening to hear MP Wayne Long at our recent Zero Thirty announcement mention how well we are regarded in Ottawa, both for innovation and getting things done. We've been working closely with the province and ME Power to advance the clean energy transition, to foster economic growth and innovation, as well as climate change action. I really appreciate that we are what we are setting out to do on these fronts is recognized in Fredericton as a benefit, not just to St. John, but the province as well. And then of course, our relationship with the city of St. John, our shareholder is very important to us. One of the ongoing priorities is collaborating with the city to advance its climate change action plan. Every year, Electricity Canada, leveraging an independent research firm, polls the customers of utilities to determine how they are performing. St. John Energy has a proud history as being one of the most highly regarded electric utilities in the nation. And I'm happy to share that last year was no exception. You can see here that we continue to rank well, both regionally and nationally on a variety of important measures. Our reputation is very important to us. And as you know, we're working hard every day to earn and improve upon it. St. John Energy could not accomplish any of this if it were not for our talented and dedicated workforce. Our people drive our success. They are the ones that put our customers first, that ensure the reliability of our services, that lend their ingenuity and commitment to propel innovation. It was a very proud moment for all of us when the Birchill Wind Farm opened officially earlier this month. Most of our employees were there, you know, symbolic of the collective effort and determination to bring it alive. I am grateful to them for all that they do each and every day. Throughout our history, giving back to the community has been an important part of our culture. At St. John Energy, we support our community simply because it's the right thing to do. In 2022, St. John Energy and our employees donated $150,000 to more than 40 charities in the city. We believe that these contributions are investments in building better futures for our community and the people that live in it. Our employees really take the lead in this by giving through payroll deductions and in guiding where the investments go. Their contributions are matched by St. John Energy. Recently, a few of us were able to participate in the United Way Trolley Tour, and I think they called it Seeing is Believing. In visits to several of the charities, we were able to see firsthand the difference that St. John Energy's donations are making. It truly was a very impactful experience. Before I go, I'd like to outline an important partnership that we have with the New Brunswick Community College. Together, we have created two initiatives, a bursary program for students studying in an energy-related discipline, as well as the St. John Energy Innovation Fund. In just a moment, you will hear from Jody Stringer-Webb, the Dean of Engineering Technologies at NBCC, with more on this. But these initiatives are very important to us because there are other ways in which we can invest in the future. Invest in the future of people and in, in the future innovation right here in New Brunswick. When I look at our progress over the last year, I am grateful. Grateful to the people of St. John Energy. Grateful for the community that believes in us and grateful to the people like you who have partnered with us, worked with us, and supported us along the way. I invite you to continue to follow what we are doing and to engage with us. We post news and developments and other items of interest on our social media channels. You can also visit 030.ca and stjohnenergy.com for news and information. We welcome your ideas and suggestions and remind you to submit your questions online here today. 
On behalf of the entire team at St. John Energy, thank you very much for your time and attention today. Shelly, over to you and our next speaker. Thank you, Ryan, for that presentation. Anyone with questions about Ryan's presentation or about St. John Energy is encouraged to add them into the Q&A, and Ryan or one of his colleagues will tackle them. If we run short on time, your question will be answered afterward and forwarded to you by email. Members of the media are asked to save their questions for one-on-one -on -one interviews this afternoon. Media who have not yet arranged for an interview are asked to email jessica.delong at sjenergy.com. And now I'd like to call upon Scott Skinner, President and CEO of the Clean Foundation in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The Clean Foundation is a nonprofit, non-governmental environment organization that works at the intersection of energy, education, and policy, all through the lens of climate change. Scott, over to you. Thanks, Shelley, for the introduction. Uh, as she mentioned, I'm Scott Skinner. I'm the CEO of the Clean Foundation based here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, I also wear a couple of other hats. I'm the chair of the Minister's Roundtable for Environment and Sustainable Prosperity here in Nova Scotia. And I also sit on the advisory committee for the Canadian Climate Institute. Uh, and the Canadian Climate Institute has done a, a whole lot of interesting work over the last few years. Uh, giving us some an idea of how to reach net zero. And, and one of the more interesting things uh, that relates to St. John Energy is the big switch report that they produced last year. It, in it, it uh, you know, has some major uh, main recommendations how to adjust uh, the electricity systems on the path to net zero. And, and these will come to no surprise to, to you uh, that they are making electricity systems bigger uh, because we are going to have to uh, provide electricity for a lot more uses in the future, like electric vehicles and fuel switching at residential heating, uh, making electricity systems cleaner, uh, reducing the carbon intensity and uh, putting more renewables and storage on the grid, and importantly, making those systems smarter. So uh, I know St. John, St. John Energy has, has had some, uh, been involved in some smart uh, energy projects as well. So all this aligns very closely with your work. I was very happy to see the announcement of Zero Thirty uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. This is very uh, inspiring, and uh, will, in, in my mind, position St. John Energy as leaders not just within New Brunswick but in our region in the country. Uh, it's fantastic to see St. John Energy confronting the, the the immense challenge of net zero head on. Like these ambitious commitments, in and of itself. Are, are going to create economic opportunity and jobs in your region. Uh, and if you can accomplish it in this, uh, this six and a half years ahead of us to 2030, uh, you're gonna do amazing things for your customers, the province of New Brunswick and the region. Uh, Ryan, I'd just like to give a warm congrats to you and your team for stepping up to this challenge. Uh, at the Clean Foundation and the Climate Institute, we'll be watching all along the way. Uh, first, as you map it out, and, and hopefully there's lots for us all to learn from this, and then to move rapidly on implementing. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to, to, to speak here today, and I'm very, very proud of the work that's happening uh, with your organization in New Brunswick. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, for joining us today and sharing that with us. And now for our final speaker, Jody Stringer-Webb of the New Brunswick Community College. We're delighted she could join us today to talk about an important initiative between St. John Energy and the college that will both support students and foster innovation. Jody. Okay, thanks Shelley. Uh, my name is Jody Stringer Webb. I am the Dean for the School of Engineering Technologies at the New Brunswick Community College. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your annual general meeting. And thank you for St. John Energy's generous gift of $50,000 to help us train the next generation of energy workers in New Brunswick. Your gift will both directly support students financially and help us develop the St. John Energy Innovation Fund, a very exciting initiative to fund research opportunities, projects, staff development, and training equipment for the latest alternative energy solutions. Moving to a sustainable future means that we need to equip workers with the skills required for new and emerging green sectors training our students for the jobs of today and tomorrow. As one of New Brunswick's largest post-secondary institutions, we need to be ready to support learners, industries, and communities in the transition. With the help of generous donors like St. John Energy, 
MBCC is well positioned to develop the workforce that will be instrumental in addressing climate change. This involves modifying existing programs and developing new ones that address climate-related workforce needs and green skills development, ensuring our training encompasses climate-related competencies. Across Canada, the STEM sector is growing faster than the skilled workforce. There are so many opportunities available for those who have the right training. Through workforce entry, exit, re-entry, and continuing education, technology is changing and we need to change the way we teach it. This funding is going to help us keep pace with the changes and our partnership with St. John Energy is critical to continuing to raise awareness about the career opportunities in STEM, particularly around alternative energy solutions. With our vision of transforming lives and communities, NBCC is committed to combating climate change and building sustainability into our training and operations. Our commitment is outlined in our first climate action strategy, a three-year plan to become a critical resource and partner in combating climate change and its impacts. NBCC's climate action strategy is built on education and training opportunities, research, innovation, and experiential learning sustainable operations, facilities, and administration, and partnerships and engagement. The St. John Energy Innovation Fund will be a key component of our climate action strategy as we train the workforce of today and tomorrow. Thank you once again for the opportunity to say thank you on behalf of everyone at NBCC for your very generous gift. It's certainly demonstrative of the long and productive partnership we've enjoyed with St. John Energy over the years. Here's to many more years of working together to deliver education that works. Thank you very much, Jody. We are really excited about this partnership and look forward to seeing it grow. And now I'd like to introduce Jessica DeLong, Manager of Stakeholder Relations at St. John Energy to moderate the question and answer session and to take us out of our event today. Jessica? Great, thank you, Shelley. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we have received a lot of questions already, so we're gonna just get started. Uh, joining Ryan um, in the Q&A today is Tom Brown, our Manager of Finance, Shelley Wood, our Executive Director of Finance, People and Community, Ryan Shoneman, our Executive Director of Operations, and Glenn Fillmore, Executive Director of Strategic Growth and Transformation. Welcome. So uh, the first question as we look through here, um, Ryan, this looks like a good one for you. What will the next five years look like for St. John Energy? Okay, well, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, within uh, Certainly within the next two years, uh, we will have the zero roadmap uh, complete. Uh, so we'll have a clear understanding uh, before us uh, in, in terms of what we will do, uh, you know, to support, you know, that energy, uh, you know, transition and uh, what new products and services that we would look to bring forward uh, to offer our customers. Uh, undoubtedly, this journey will lead to, to more uh, renewable energy, uh, you know, and storage uh, projects. Uh, we'll also be looking to actively grow, uh, you know, our system, make investments uh, to continue to support the increased demand that I spoke about, uh, you know, earlier. Um, but at the same time, customers should expect that, you know, some things will not change, such as our, our focus on being agile, uh, our focus on prudent financial management, uh, you know, uh, our focus on high reliability and uh, to maintain uh, competitive rates uh, going forward. Oh, I think you're on uh, mute, Jess. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Um, there are a few submitted questions around uh, residential renewable energy. So I'm just going to summarize those. Um, and then we'll um, probably pass it over to Shelley for this one. Uh, the first one is, are there any plans to enhance support for the initiative and the installation of solar panels? For example, improving the current rates for supplying energy to the grid. The next one is, Next, how is St. John Energy going to enable citizens to adopt solar and expedite the transition to green energy production? And someone from a very windy area of West St. John is interested in a potential wind generation for residential customers. And they ask, is there any discussion for residential customers to have any assistance when setting up green options for power generation in our backyards? Uh, also, we did have someone else that asked about virtual net metering. So a lot of questions there, but Shelley, do you think you can address those? 
I sure can. Thank you, Jessica. So we are very interested in renewable energy, including solar and wind. Our Zero 030 initiative will help us evaluate the opportunities and challenges on that front, including options for how we can help our customers. And we certainly know that our customers are very interested in renewable energy as well. We've been working with UNB to collect data on solar and are continuing to explore the potential for solar for our community and our customers. On wind power, our focus has been on the Birchill project and getting it connected to the grid. Now that Birchill is up and running, we can turn our attention to other potential for wind, including residential. Certainly, residential solar and wind projects would qualify for our net metering program, allowing customers to sell excess energy that they generate back to us. So while we're exploring these, we'd absolutely love to hear your ideas and suggestions. So you can go ahead and share those with us at communications at sjenergy.com. Great. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, Glenn, we have some questions around EVs. So I'm just going to summarize those for you first. How does St. John Energy see itself as a player in the electric vehicle space? And why is St. John Energy behind in the level three EV chargers? What is the plan for catching up to other New Brunswick communities? Glenn? All right. Uh, thank you very much for these. Um, we are actively involved in EV charging today in various locations throughout St. John uh, with level two charger uh, stations. And most recently, we partnered with MB Power to deploy the first level three charger at Chateau St. John. Um, level three charging is an area of keen interest for us. Uh, we've always been careful with everything we do to make certain that there is a strong business case. Having said that, as Ryan mentioned earlier, uh, we will have some exciting news coming on that front, so please stay tuned. Um, it will have to do with expanding both Level 2 and Level 3 charging in St. John. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Glenn. And this question, Ryan Shoneman, what is St. John Energy doing to maintain high reliability into the future? Sure, great question, Jess. Uh, in an annual survey, as Ryan had mentioned uh, in his slides, uh, of our customers conducted for Electricity Canada last fall, St. John Energy achieved an 80% satisfaction rating for reliability, which is significantly above the national average for utilities, which stands at 61%. Uh, we work hard every day at maintaining a strong electrical grid for our city, and we owe a great deal of the, of the credit for that to the dedication of our, of our line crews. Uh, prevention is key to maintaining reliable service, and we will continue to do that into the future. Aside from uh, tree trimming and other preventative measures, we continually have people out inspecting equipment and lines for any signs uh, of damage uh, that need to be addressed, uh, repaired, or replaced. Uh, we invest in an industry-leading digital asset management system so that we know the lifespan of our lines, poles, and other assets. And uh, lastly, we have invested in uh, smart grid technologies. Uh, we employ software, sensors, and equipment that allow us to, de to detect outages very quickly. Um, and we also have redundancies in place that in most cases allow us to switch customers over to another power source if, uh, if we do experience an outage. Okay, great. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, here's a question for Tom Brown. Tom, what do you see being the top three income earnings for St. John Energy moving forward? Sure. Thanks, Jess. Um, I would anticipate it's probably pretty similar to how it is today. So um, our top three income lines would be our core business, which is delivering electricity to our customers, uh, as well as our service offerings around the rental of mini split heat pumps and water heaters. Uh, so I would see that continuing into the future, but uh, probably equally as important to uh, increasing revenue would be uh, managing costs. So some some big projects that Ryan would have alluded to earlier in the presentation around virtual wind, uh, shaving peak demand, and as well uh, investments into smart grid. So those are all really uh, big examples of significant projects that we've done with the aim of reducing our expense on purchase cost. Uh, which really helps to ensure stable rates uh, for our customers into the future. Great. Thank you, Tom. Okay, this one, Ryan Mitchell. Will the generation st stats for Birchill be visible on a public dashboard? 
So, uh, you know, I think it's a good idea. Uh, it is something we're, we're looking into. Uh, I certainly would like to. I think we should. Um, we just need to figure out uh, how we might do that. So uh, I would say uh, stay, stay tuned. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Glenn, here's an interesting one. Um, here it is. Is St. John Energy ready for e-bike uh, inductive into, ch into charging? So e-bike inductive charging. Right. Thank you for that. Um, we are excited at the prospect of supporting the rollout of e-bikes, and we certainly love to hear from our customers on that. And we're certainly open to ideas and suggestions, and uh, we would certainly invite you to share those with us at communications at sjenergy.com. Great. Thank you. Um, so we're running out of time. Uh, we wanted to keep this short and sweet so everyone can get back. Um, we are going to tackle a couple more questions um, and then we'll close it off. So let's look at these ones. So Ryan Mitchell, here are two more about renewables. What are the future plans for increasing renewable energy and storage capacity? And is there any plan to expand wind power turbines in other locations throughout New Brunswick? Okay. Uh, well, as a as a community owned utility, uh, we are focused on on serving our customers and developing uh, you know projects primarily here uh, in St. John. Um, as Shelley mentioned, now that Birchill is online, uh, we are looking at you know what makes uh, sense next. For certain, additional wind energy will be considered. Uh, we do expect other ideas and options to come forward as we work through the zero thirty uh, initiative, uh, but. You know, uh, as we kind of touched on earlier, we always want to make sure that that the business case is is there. Um, but it's safe to say we're we're keen on uh, further de further developing uh, renewable energy and storage. Great, thank you, Ryan. So we have received many questions, just so everyone knows, in the chat and also uh, through our RSVP process. So we really thank everyone that has submitted them. Um, if we didn't get to your questions today, I would like you to know that we will follow up through an email, the address that you registered on. So we'll get those answers to you. And I want to say thank you to everyone. That concludes our meeting today. Uh, don't forget to follow us, as Ryan's mentioned, um, on our social media uh, and to visit us at sjenergy.com and 030.ca. Thank you for joining us today. Have a happy and safe day. Bye-bye.